Okay, um, this morning what I'm going to be looking at is probably one of the most significant events in the New Testament that you will read about, and that is the conversion of Saul to Paul. And um, there is one major reason I would suggest why this is such an important uh, event, and that is because the whole thing, the whole uh, conversion of Saul hinges around the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see in a moment that all that Paul uh, preached, all that he taught, all that he wrote hinges around this one historical event, whether Jesus of Nazareth actually rose from the dead. And uh, I believe that he did. And uh, we're going to uh, look at that now in just a moment. And uh, so if you can, in your minds, as it were, uh, to go back in time to that amazing event that took place on the road to Damascus. So if you have a, a Bible with you, you want to follow me, and I encourage you to do so. We're going to look at Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, and starting at verse number 1. Acts 9 and verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, the way of course being Christianity, it was called the way, uh, whether they were men or women, that he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling, astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told uh, told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. So, we see first of all, Saul, as he was before his conversion, is a Pharisee. And he's on a mission. He's, he's going to Damascus. It's the road to Damascus from Jerusalem that he's on. And he's going with evil intent. You know, you read in, the, in uh, Acts 7 about Stephen, the first Christian martyr, uh, of course stoned to death. And it says that the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man whose name was Saul. And this is the man. This is Saul. And uh, he has an absolute zeal for the destruction of Christianity. He wants to wipe it out. It's a sort of Richard Dawkins-like zeal to destroy every element of Christianity. He wants to wipe it off the face of the earth. And he, with his initiative, has gone to the high priest asking for letters so that he can go outside his own kind of jurisdiction, as it were. And as the Bible puts it, he went uh, onto strange cities, you know, just places far away so he could persecute Christians even in, you know, further places. This is how consumed he is with, with zeal for the destruction of Christianity. And uh, the Bible gives this picture of him as breathing out, in verse 1, breathing out threatenings and slaughter. And it's almost uh, almost inhuman, isn't it? He sounds like some kind of ferocious beast. He's breathing them out. Uh, what's inside him is coming out of his mouth. And it's these threatenings. This when he's not actually uh, having them bound and brought, brought back to Jerusalem, he's threatening to do that, putting them in fear. Uh, and so he very much is a, a feared figure uh, who's going to persecute, he's trying to destroy whether they're men or women. He, that's just, he's solely bent on this one thing. And so he embarks with evil intent uh, on this road to Damascus to trouble the Christians in Damascus. Well, then we read about this incredible event that happens. Uh, quite unexpectedly, it seems, from, from what we're reading in this account in Acts 9, that suddenly there is a bright light. Now, there have been many opinions uh, by people as to what this 
uh, event really what really happened on the road to Damascus. Uh, the Bible says that he saw a bright light, that it shone around him, and that he heard the voice of the Lord Jesus. Now, we know from the Bible that the Lord Jesus died on a cross. And then the Bible says, on the third day, he rose again. So the question is, is it really the risen Christ that he's hearing here? Is it really Jesus Christ ascended that's speaking to him, or is it something else? Now, lots of people have had various views on this. Some have said, well, uh, perhaps the light that he speaks of is, is perhaps it's hot sun. Maybe he's got sunstroke. Now, maybe uh, he's come, uh, he's seeing like a mirage because the heat was so bad. Maybe he sees this mirage and he thinks it's Jesus Christ. He thinks it's the risen Christ. And he thinks he can hear Christ speaking to him. But actually, it's just, you know, a mirage. Somebody else has said, well, perhaps uh, what has happened is that he's fallen off his horse when there's, you know, there's been a flash, maybe a flash of lightning or something like that. And he's fallen off his horse. I mean, the Bible doesn't say he's on a horse. It doesn't mention any creature like that. But if you're assuming that he's on a horse and he falls off the horse and he's bumped his head and then maybe just kind of imagine the whole thing. Okay, there's a third option that people give. Maybe he was so consumed with zeal and so busy in persecuting the church that he has some kind of nervous breakdown on the road to Damascus and that, that in this nervous breakdown he has a delusion in which he sees the risen Christ and he seems to speak to him. And you know, all those, those three ideas have been put forward as a possible explanation of what happened to Saul on the road to Damascus. But they all ignore one important fact, that there were others with him who also heard the voice. So this is no subjective experience. The Bible says that the others heard the voice but they couldn't understand the words. They weren't intelligible words to them. But they were afraid because they heard a voice from heaven. And so I would put it to you this morning that however improbable it may seem that what happened to Saul on the road to Damascus was indeed that the risen Christ, the ascended Jesus, stopped him and spoke to him. And in fact, that's what Saul, later to be Paul, says. He says that he was apprehended by the risen Christ. Uh, I think it's Philippians 3.12. It says, God, in the form of Jesus, stopped him on the road. And he spoke to him. And uh, the interesting thing about it is for those who say, oh, that, that, that can't have happened. We look at what uh, Paul does from this moment on. That... After this, after he's gone to, to uh, after he recovers from, from the, the whole incident, that he goes out preaching the gospel. That he goes taking the gospel out. What he doesn't take out is an extension of Judaism. Don't forget, a lot of people get this wrong. They think, oh well, you know, he just he just carried on preaching what he always preached, his, his, his Judaism, but just with a slight alteration. Judaism at the time of Jesus was not uh, Old Testament uh, teaching of Moses. In fact, that's one of the things that Jesus criticizes the Pharisees for, isn't it? He says, you sit in the seat of Moses, or well, you're teaching all these things that Moses never taught. You know, you're teaching uh, as doctrines the traditions of men. Remember, they had all those uh, rules where you had to clean the dish before you could eat it. And they criticized Jesus, saying, why don't you wash your hands? Your, your disciples don't wash their hands when they eat. They eat. And Jesus is saying, well, that's nothing to do with the Bible. That's a tradition you've made up. So there was all these men's traditions at the time, and there was also a little bit of um, a little bit of the occult in there, of Kabbalah and stuff like that, and all got mixed up with the teaching of Moses. And so that's what the Jews were practicing. That was what Judaism was in those days. And so what we see from the Apostle Paul from this time on is a totally different kind of preaching. You know, he's not telling people they need to be circumcised. He's not telling people that they need to uh, perform animal sacrifices or anything like that. But he's preaching the gospel. And the question is, where does he get that from? Where does he get this gospel that he takes out to people? Because it is three years before he meets any of the apostles. It's three years before he meets, and then he only meets Peter and James, you remember? And so, uh, where does he get this gospel from? Where does he get this teaching that he's now bringing from 